But today we're going to go over uh, template editing. And uh, basically, we're, the structure is going to be starting with um, formatting, some basic formatting that you can do within the template. Um, and then the last half is going to be focused on um, some more kind of automated tips and things that you can do to speed up your report writing that are um, template edits. So we'll just get into that. Um, I'm going to sh share my screen. Uh, da, 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 screen one. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm in our lovely HomeGage desktop writer here, and I'm going to just open up a fresh report. So, um, and I'm going to expand this as well. And so first I'm going to open up a template and I'm not actually going to fill out any customer or report info information. So if you're new to HomeGage and you have not uh, done much template editing, just so you know, you don't really need to start a report um, like you would in the appointment manager. Uh, you don't need to fill out this kind of stuff. If you're just template editing, you can just go right to select report template. I'm gonna choose this residential one. That's what I was working in um, recently. And then I'm gonna click open template. Uh, if you're new and you don't know about this part, uh, you can actually open up a template and then rename it and make it your own by going to File, Save Template As. And instead of basically modifying and changing this residential by room, um, I can actually keep that in my software and I can add this one as my new template. So I'm gonna call it Suzy Training. Um, and then I'll just go down here and click save. And again, I don't need to be in the customer or the report info. I'm just going to be working in the template section. So to begin, we're going to go to the general info. And this comment key and definitions area, um, this area, most of our templates are going to have the same inspected, not inspected, not present, repair, replace. But you might want to change that. Um, a lot of people will change it, but then they think like, oh, I changed it. I changed it in the report, but then they go to do the next report and the change isn't there. So that's a common thing. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this change and how to make it stick. So the next time you open up your template, your customization um, is still there. So comment key and definition, this is basically just an auto comment uh, that's been saved. And then a box is checked to say, hey, every time you start a template, populate this on default. So in order to modify this, we don't really modify it right here. If we modified it right here, it would basically um, just change it for that report. So to modify it in the template, what you'll do is you'll basically go right here to the magic wand. So this one is um, going to pull up your library of comments, you know, for general info. This one is to if you need to add your own new comment. Um, but what we're doing is we're modifying this one. So we'll click on this and it opens up all the comments that are preloaded and associated with this general info section and only that. To locate our comment key and definition comment simply just kind of scroll down and look for the comment called comment key. So here it is. I'm highlighting it. Um, I'll also point out that over there's this column that says auto. That has a Y in it. And that's another indicator just letting me know that's the one that's showing up automatically. So if there's a Y in that column, that just means that comment is always going to appear upon report start. Um, and we want to modify this. So to modify this, we'll go up to the template editing toolbar right here. And the wrench, if you hover over it, it says edit comment. In HomeGage software, the wrench is always going to say edit. Plus is going to be you know, add or insert. Um, there's a T next to everything. So that just means it's a template change modification. So we'll click 
that and popped up on my other screen. So I'm just dragging it over. Um, and here, this is where you make your change. So let's see here. So let's say that we like inspected, not inspected, not present. Um, let's say that we're gonna do repair, replace. I don't know why there's uh, parentheses there. Um, and then we're also going to do a monitor uh, monitor um, call out as well. Like that. And you can use you know the toolbar up here to add a little bit of formatting. And then you can add your definition of what monitor means. So um, Item. I don't know. I'm just kind of leaving it simple, but being a home inspector, you probably have something way more uh, technical to put there. <laughs> um, so you can add all the different um, call outs, uh, severities that you would be um, needing to describe here, and you can change it. Uh, you can also change this and you can add whatever you like here. I see some inspectors will, you know, put a little bit more lengthy of a description or they might have kind of a, a more of a formal um, hello to your customer here. And this is basically the first page that they read of the report. So um, I do see some inspectors put in their standards of practice right here. So you can pretty much do whatever you like. Um, but uh, by default, you know, HomeGage comes with this one. And if you wanna make any changes, that's simply what you do. Um, you can also color code. So I know that a lot of inspectors might use, you know, things in, let's say, we're gonna highlight monitor and I'll go over here to the font color. Let's say monitor, everything that is blue is gonna be monitor. Um, repair, Repair or replace, we'll go here and we'll say everything, you know, red is going to be repair, replace. Um, and then the rest of the items are fine. So you can color code. And then uh, later on, if you have certain summaries, which we're going to go into how to create summaries and how to color code those, uh, they can match up. So here, that's basically all you need to do. Um, and then we're going to go down here and select OK. Um, so now that I've selected OK, at this point, I could bring that comment in again into my report by clicking the X and doing insert as one comment. Um, but for this purpose, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually, I just made my change. I clicked OK. I'm not trying to bring it back into this report because it's not really a report. I just made a template change. So I'm just going to click cancel. And then up here at the top right corner, the Save T icon will light up. You'll know you did it properly when the Save T icon lights up. So I'll click Save T. Nothing happened here. It's still the same because I never really brought that change comment back into the report. Um, but if I wanted to, now I could. I could go in here. I could hit the eraser. I could go in here and I could um, insert the intro. I could insert the comment by selecting it, clicking insert. And now I have my new modified comment. Um, but if I wanna see if it actually will show up the next time I open up the template, I can go ahead and go to new. Um, when I hit new, I do get a prompt. Do I wanna save changes to the report? I'm not actually you know, modifying a report. I could care less. So I'm gonna say, no, I don't need to save changes to the report. I've saved my template. I'll click no for that. Brings me back to this screen here where I can go to select report template. I have my new training template there that I created and I'll click open. And then if I go to general info, if all uh, worked as it should, I should have, there we go, my modification. Um, so that's the first thing I want to go over because it happens a lot. Um, remember your general report introduction. If you want to modify it, you'll want to go up here to select your comment, highlight it, use the edit wrench, make your changes here, click OK. 
uh, and then you can click cancel and then save T and it will get um, added the next time you open up your report. So that's how you do that. So general information, when you change things there, sometimes that makes you need to change things in other parts of the template. So um, that could be column headers or it could be another summary. So I'm gonna show you how to do both those things. So first we're gonna go down to um, summary. And um, let's say that we wanna have two summaries in this template. We wanna have a repair and replace summary, but a monitor summary. And I wanna color code them so that Monitor stuff comes up blue in the report and stands out a little bit, and then repair replace definitely 100% stands out um, in red. So to do that, I'll go down to the bottom and I'll click on summary here. And when I'm looking at summary here, I'll go up to the top and I'll click on edit summaries. So, sorry, my uh, toolbar for Zoom is in the way, okay. Oh, there's a question. Okay, so, um, all right. So I've clicked on summary and I've clicked on edit summary. So right now this is a single summary template and I wanna make it into two summaries. So I've got my general summary here uh, that has a summary introduction and a footer. Um, and then if I want to add another summary, I go up here to add T and it gives me this box where I can create a new summary name. I'm going to call this one monitor. Monitor summary. I like to call it monitor summary. So it's really cl clear that it is a summary. Um, and I suggest that you do that as well. Um, so monitor summary, I'm going to call it an M. This abbreviation is just for uh, my knowledge only. And then here I can check that box and I can choose a different color if I want. So I can have the text anytime I add a comment um, and I basically tell the software that that should go to the monitor summary, um, it can come out in blue. Um, so I can do that or I can also check this box here and I can say, oh, I would like a, um, an icon next to that summary item every time it shows up in the report. So I can you know, click this gray box here, which opens up a window, your file explorer and your computer, and you can you know, add different um, icons. HomeGage comes with a bunch of them, um, but you can also make your own. So just so you know, I did that. I, um, I actually, I went to Google or I went somewhere and I made a couple of different icons. You know, I just saved them. Um, I hover over the ones that come with HomeGage and I get this little box here where it tells me the dimensions. So I knew that it would be like a 20 by 20 pixels. Um, and basically I just went into your generic paint program that comes with HomeGage and I sized it down to match, um, and I saved it as a GIF file. If that sounds like too crazy of steps for you to do, you can always send something like that into HomeGage, into HomeGage support, just email us maybe an icon and just say, hey, I'd love to have this as an icon in my software. Could you, you know, save it for me in the proper format and size? Um, and it doesn't take us too long to do that. So I did that, and I'm gonna actually add this blue arrow to my monitor. So I'll click that and I'll click open. And I can do the blue font, um, but I'm not going to. Actually, I'm gonna make it match a little bit more. So there we go. And then I'll click okay. So now we've got two summaries. I've got my general and then my monitor. Um, this one right here, I do need to modify. So I wanted to say repair, replace. So I just clicked on that tab. I'll go back up here to my template editing toolbar and I'll click on edit T. Here I'm going to call this um, repair slash repair replace summary. And I'll go to RR for the abbreviation. And then I can choose, you know, a color like red. I do think that red 
tons of red font might be a little off-putting to people when they're reading things. So I'm actually not going to have um, the color populate automatically, but I will choose an icon that is going to be red. So I've got that checked. And um, I'm looking for, doo, doo, doo. okay, so I'm looking for an icon here. Um, I'm going to go back to my home gauge folder and look at the ones that come with the software. So your software is going to automatically point to this folder here, home gauge HTML5. They'll automatically point there, you know, as soon as you open it up. Um, and I'm going to choose one of these I'll do uh, that one right there and I'm hovering over these two just to make sure it's the size I wanted it so there's a small and a large um, and I'll click open and so now that will come next to all my repair replace items I'll select okay there so now you'll see I've got um, repair, replace summary and monitor summary, and I can keep going. I can add another one. I can add multi, you know, I can just add more summaries if I like. We, we recommend don't go crazy because it's a lot to handle um, and a lot to digest if you're um, a home buyer or an agent, uh, but it is really helpful to break out um, certain things. Um, some people will have a safety summary, you know, and you can also put them in a specific order. So repair replaces at the top and then monitor. But, you know, maybe if I was having a safety summary, I would um, add that and I would have it show up first. So the way to do that, I've got monitor here. If it, I wanted it to show up first in the list, I could click that and it would um, show up first. All right, so I just made some template changes. So I'm gonna click Save T. And now I kind of wanna, wanna check out what they look like. So let's go take a look. Um, we'll give this puppy a, a test drive here. Uh, I'll go into Roof Systems. And you'll notice up here, we've got our column headers, you know, and they're not quite the same. Um, I do have a monitor severity now, and I have the choice of adding um, another column header here or you know, adjusting it in a different fashion. So to change your column headers, basically you can go up here to template, um, and then let's see here, uh, edit column headers. And we're gonna edit all sections. You can do them individually. So if you, you know, had uh, bathrooms and you just wanted something more unique, um, you could choose that and do this section, but we're going to do all sections. Um, this is just a warning saying we've done some things and it might change our report, but we're not really in a report. We're doing this in the template. So a lot of these template changes that are changing the structure you want to do not while you're in an actual report. So I'll click OK there. Um, it lists all my inspection items and um, all my column headers here. Sorry, not all my inspection items. It lists all my column headers here to add one. So I could go to Add Column. I get another warning. I'm just going to click Yes um, because I know I'm not in a real report. And I could say Monitor. And I could give it an abbreviation called M. And I can click OK. And then um, once I do that, I can move it into the proper location just by kind of double clicking below M and then clicking the move left. And I can move it to any location here. Um, down below, I'll notice a few, I'll point out a few things. Uh, use this column as a normal column or use this column as an exclude column. The exclude column will exclude the whole item. So that's kind of saved for this column here. So, you know, most uh, column headers that you're adding, you're gonna choose this option here. Um, below that, I can check this box that says when this column is selected, it's gonna quick set a summary selection. So if I checked monitor, I could, I could check that and I could also, go down to select summaries and, and I could say every time I checked an M, send that comment and photos to the monitor summary. So I could do that. Um, I'm not going to actually in this example, I'm just gonna hit cancel. 
Uh, but I just wanted to point that out. So there's that functionality. So that's how you add a column header. And then to edit them, you can just go in here and click edit. And you can change the name and the abbreviations and the functions. Um, to delete, you can just highlight under it and click delete. And I'm actually going to delete both of them. I'm, um, I'm deleting repair, replace, and I'm deleting monitor. And there's a purpose. OK, so I'm keeping mine pretty streamlined. So my template is going to have inspected, not inspected, not present, and exclude. I'm not actually going to indicate at the item level the severity, you know, if it's repair, replace, or monitor maintenance. I'm not. I'm just not doing it. Um, I'm actually going to do that at the comment level. So I'm just leaving that there, and I'm hitting OK. All right, so now I'm looking at um, my changes. So basically, the column headers for me, it's just a checklist for me, making sure that I've hit everything. So I've hit inspected, not inspected, not present. I've just checked all those things off, and it just helps me stay on track in my report, and I can exclude stuff. But when it comes to um, you know putting things in the summary and adding comments and stuff like that, I'm doing that somewhat manually, but I like to do that because um, I just want more flexibility and I want to be able to say, hey, in roof coverings, maybe there's a big hole in the roof that goes with repair, replace, but maybe there's some debris on the roof that um, should be cleaned out or swept off or something like that. That's not really repair, replace. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, and then maybe there's a monitor um, severity as well. So I wanna be able to kind of have multiple things and I want it to be kind of super clear to my buyers. Um, and so I'm not going to use these um, column headers. If you know home gauge, you know that as soon as you click a column header, it's going to pop that title at the top of roof covering. So um, if I had multiples like a monitor and a repair replace, um, it would, when you're reading the report, it would say roof coverings, monitor, repair, replace. And it might be confusing, you know, which one. So I just kind of remove that and it's all going to come from the comment and the summary. So we're just going to play around with that. So I'm going to say that, yes, I inspected the roof coverings. I'll pull in um, a picture here. Do, do, do. Uh, where are my photos? Okay. okay so I'm pulling in some pictures. I'll actually do it with. Sure, bathroom. Okay, so I'm in rooms or I'm in bathrooms and I'm in the plumbing water supply distribution systems. And I'm going to add this right here. And I'm going to add a comment about it just being um, slow draining. So I'll just add my slow drain comment. Do, do if I got one. I'm just going to type it out. So I'll say, so I'm going to say monitor sink drain slow. Um, and then I'm going to check this box down at the bottom just manually. I'm just check monitor, and that comment will go to um, that particular summary, but in the body of the report, it's going to have that icon next to it, you know, pointing it out. And then I'm also going to go here and I'll create an itemized comment for plumbing, and I'll pull in this one here where I've got a leak, and you know, that's no good. So that is definitely a repair replace item. So I'll add that photo and then add my comment about um, the leak. I've inserted that. And for this one, oops, sorry, I um, realized that there's this one setting in HomeGage that basically every time you add a, a new itemized tab, 
it checks off the original summary that was added to the first one. So I, I need to turn that off because that doesn't really help me. So I'm just going to, I'm removing this. Um, I'm going up to template and under template, we have some options. And this is the option that was turned on that I don't really like. In general, I'm not a big fan of it. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And that is just gonna give me free control over um, what the summary um, does. It doesn't automatically add summaries to anything for me. I do it myself and I prefer that. So I'm gonna select okay. Ah. There we are. Um, so we're back at our inspection item. I've got this one right here that's just a monitor. And then my second tab here is going to be a repair replace. Um, so I've got these two here. And um, now we're going to do a print preview and just kind of see how it looks. I also might want to put here repair um, replace. If it were me and I was an inspector, I would through all my comments, I would kind of add something like this um, in the beginning of a comment that was a repair replace comment. Um, and you can save these in your comment library. Um, so I did repair replace, and then this one I'm going to do monitor. All right, and we'll see how it looks. All right, so here we'll do save T. We'll click print. I know that uh, we're not in a real report, so all items haven't been answered, but to get our preview, we're just gonna say yes to that. And um, we have different styles and formats that we can choose from. I'll go with the clean narrative and I like the um, sea green. I'll say okay to that. And I was in the room section I, oh no i was in the bathroom section i believe yes okay so as i'm scrolling down my report and if i was a buyer or an agent cruising down and i'm reading it and i'm like oh yeah cool there we go uh that's really easy and it calls out right away that this is a monitor item i've got my little arrow there i did tell the software to um, pull in all blue for monitor um, but for repair replace, I thought it was a little too much to have just tons of red, you know, so I just thought, hey, I would just do that repair replace in red and then put the icon there. Um, I like that method, but um, you might find other creative ways to, you know, communicate your summaries, but I love that you can add the icons and color code. Um, and that's what that looks like. If we go down to the summary at the bottom. Do, do, do. Um, we've got our repair replace summary right at the top there. And it shows, you know, the, the different, uh, the inspection item that it's in. And then we have our monitor summary down here as well. Um, with the summaries, you can get into formatting. Like I can remove this kind of, you know, top part of the report, you know, from being repeated um, in the summary. I can also make it look like it's all, uh, within one summary and just a few clicks. So I'm going to hit close there and we'll do another print preview just to show you in case you're not aware of this. Um, I'm in full report and this isn't a template change. This is more of like a style and format change, but I just wanted to show you how the double summaries can be um, can be shown. So in full report, I'm going to click edit. And then I'll click this consolidate summaries. I can also do sort by section if I want or not. I'll leave it as is. Uh, but you can play around with that, uncheck it, do a print preview, use the same report, check it off, do a print preview, see what works for you. I'll click OK there and OK one more time. Um, so there's my comment key. I'm just going to pop down to the summary and show you. So now we've got, you know, summary is just kind of its main header. And then we've got our repair replace summary here um, and our monitor summary there. So there's a couple of ways that you can kind of share that through style and format. All right. So now that we've added summaries, we've also, I don't know, I've gone through how to um, modify the column headers here. Uh, and we've also done the comment key and definition. So we've knocked out a lot of template editing, but I want to show you a couple basics and then um, just I've got 
I don't know, a short period of time. <laughs> um, and I'll show you just a couple speed tricks if I can get to it. So under components, you can rearrange anything here and you can modify it. You can change the name all pretty easily. You just kind of click on any of these items. You can use the template editing toolbar up here or you can right click and you also get that same um, toolbar or options. So here, you know, maybe I want to change roof system chimney and attic to something different. I can click edit and maybe I just want it to be roof systems. I can erase that and click OK. Pretty easy. I can maybe I don't want garage. I can highlight garage and I can click the X. Oh, wait, sorry. One thing to note, this is your duplicate sections toolbar. This is only for the report you're working in. This is your template editing toolbar. So I've highlighted garage and I would wanna click delete T. You get a pop-up. Are you sure you wanna delete garage? Be sure to read your pop-ups. I'll say, okay. Um, and you can also rearrange um, and move these around. So I can create a new one from scratch. I can say, okay. Um, laundry. I can click OK and it goes to the bottom, but I can also go up here to up T and down T and I can, you know, highlight it and move it to a different area in the list. So that's kind of the basics of how to change things around there. You can also copy sections too. So let's say, um, you know, let's say I didn't create laundry. I'm going to delete it. Um, but laundry has pretty much all the same inspection items as rooms does. I can highlight rooms, I can do copy T, and then do paste T. A duplicate of rooms shows up down here. Um, it copied everything. It copied all the comments, all the inspection items, all the styles and materials, saving me time because that's kind of what laundry rooms look like as well. Um, and then I can Go here and edit, and I can call this the laundry. Oh, sorry, I didn't, oh, I edited the wrong rooms, but anyways, the laundry, I edited this one on, on accident, but you guys get the point. Um, so that's how you kind of move things around there. The next thing I'm gonna go into, just cause we're running out of time, uh, just how to modify the inspection items. Pretty easy, it's very similar. You can go to your inspection items, use this to you know, add a new one. It will show up at the bottom. You can move it around, move it up, move it down. You can highlight one and edit it, change the name, things like that. You can also exclude it by default. Um, so um, it might save you a click you know, on certain things. Um, and so that's pretty easy. We'll go into styles and materials next. Um, for styles and materials, to modify um, styles and materials, basically to add maybe a new option, um, you highlight the actual style and material, and then you can do a right click or you can use the toolbar up here and you'll click edit T. So now you've got your, you're gonna be editing siding style. And then we have our list of options below to add to this list or modify it. Um, let's say that we wanted to add another option. We would click the plus T here and give it a new, new name, new option. And I'll select OK. And that new option is now here at the bottom. Um, you can also click the ABC button if you want it to sort it in alphabetical order for you. And then whenever you're done, you're going to click OK to add a brand new style and material and add some options that you can select from. So let's say that we're in um, do, do roof system and we'll go back to exterior. OK, so we're in exterior and we're going to create a new side uh, style and material from scratch. Uh, we'll click add T um, and then So we're just going to do something new material, something new. Um, let's see here to add some options to that. So you'd give it an actual name and then to add options that you can choose from, you can click the plus sign here and just kind of build out a list. So you can say, uh, okay. 
just creating some fake things here, but you would build a list of options that you can click um, to add quickly. Um, one thing to point out though, at the bottom here, be sure to choose an inspection parent item. So at the bottom, this one says warning, no parent item selected. So you'll wanna click the select button and it shows you all your items. So um, we do have some advanced features in HomeGage, which can, when you select a style and material option, it can populate a comment for you. Um, and if you don't have the proper parent item selected, either the comment won't appear at all, or it might end up in the wrong spot. So uh, for this one, we're gonna say that it was, wall cladding was the parent item. So I've got that added and I would just click OK. So now I have this new material and I can choose, you know, whatever that um, option is just by selecting there. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you, there's a lot more that I wanted to show you because HomeGage is, it's got a lot, it's robust, there's a lot to do. Uh, but I did want to point out how you can have styles and materials, um, an option linked to a comment. Um, and that long comment can also be linked to a line drawing or something like that. So before we end here, we've got just a few minutes, but I think I can do it. Um, so an example of this would be, I'm over in electrical and I am in the uh, manufacturer section. And let's say that every time I select this uh, Federal Pacific, every time I do that, I need to add a disclaimer because um, you know the home buyer needs to be aware of the same thing every single time I select that. I can save myself some time and automatically link a comment to this. So every time I select this, I don't need I don't need to go searching for a comment. HomeGage automatically will put it in the right spot for me. So to link a comment to a style and material, just um, go to that style and material and you'll click edit T. Here you'll find the option that you wanna link the comment to. So I've got my Federal Pacific and then I'll go up here and I'll click the plus T, add option. And then here, oh wait, sorry, cancel. Sorry, <laughs> don't go to add option. That's at, if you're adding something new, but here we're editing this. So I'm highlighting it. I'll click the wrench and it's got my, my name there. And then I'll click this modify auto comment list button. In this box, I don't have anything linked yet. I'll click the plus with the T and it says insert comment from global list. Oh. My global list pops up and here I'm going to look for that comment. So I know I've got one here, so I'm going to go to filter and I'll type in. What I'm looking for, like a keyword, I'll select find next and there's only one comment, so that's easy. It's highlighted blue. If you had a bunch, you know, that pulled up with the keyword, you would click on the one that you want to link um, and then I'll click OK. So now it's added to my list here. I'll click OK one more time. And once I click OK, I can I'm gonna click OK one more time. A lot of OKs. Um, and then just to be sure, always go down to the inspection parent item and make sure it's going to the proper parent item. And if it says that it's not, be sure to go in and select. Otherwise, that comment's just not going to show. All right, so I've done that. Um, and then I'll click OK one more time. And I'm going to deselect that. So. You'll notice that Federal Pacific is now um, bolded. Um, you know, everything else isn't. And that's indicating that that one is going to populate a comment whenever I add it. So again, I'll go up here and click Save T. I'm gonna go to New Report, just to show you how this all works. Select Template. I'll go to my training template that I was just working in. And then we'll go over here to electrical system. In the inspection item, uh, let's see here. This is you know the one, the parent item where that comment is supposed to appear. You'll see that nothing's there right now. In styles and materials, 
I'll go to this one and I'll select it. If you're new to HomeGage, you might get a pop-up that tells you that it's gonna insert a comment. I'm gonna say, don't tell me that again, I know. Um, now, if I go back to the inspection item, wait, hold on. Maybe it didn't work, hold on a second. Oh, there it is, sorry, I was in the wrong inspection item. So um, I'm in the right inspection item and the comment is already there for me. So um, that's just one thing that you can do to speed up your report writing, part of our automations. Uh, you can also add pictures and things to comments as well. I didn't have time to go over that today, but um, we do have a bunch of recorded content on that. I think it was in the spring, HomeGage Together, I did a deep dive on linking um, pictures to comments and also um, a little bit more on um, style and materials and some other kinds of template things too. So that one is a lot longer than this 45 minutes. So check that out um, if you want to learn more about these more automated uh, template changes.